Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. I am your host, John Harris. On my right-hand side is my right-hand man, Gabriel. <laughs> and today on the Rock and Roll Podcast, we have Kalahari, who has a new EP called Thea, which was released on June 26. Right now, I'm being joined by Nico to share some more information about what the band has got going on, what they've been up to, and some... Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Now, Nico, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the Rock and Metal Podcast. Beautiful. Well, it is a pleasure to have you on, my good man. Now, I guess my big question is, the EP is called Thea. We have this track called Thea. Is, yeah. And I'm guessing it is a girl's name. <laughs> That's a great guess. Uh, honestly, but so Thea, um, we said Thea is a girl. Yes, it's a it's a female name, and um, it comes from ancient Greece. Uh, and for them, it was a Titan. So um, these huge beings who lived even before gods they created gods and Thea had a spear and she was a very very good looking woman who liked to destroy things this sounds yeah yeah i mean girls are trouble this is this is exactly what we know <laughs> yeah well they, said <laughs> they wield spears and they they destroy things uh yeah yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay, now because this track then is called there and the EP is called there, is it then a concept EP about this potential female? Yeah, yeah, it's not actually about the um, the female itself. You know, that name was given to um, a small planet that, um, following the theory of the giant impact, hit Earth billions of years ago and created the moon. Um, and also started that whole process of uh, biological and chemical reactions that brought our planet to life. And um, this is what's really about Thea. It is a concept EP um, where Thea, the track, deals with the creation. So it's a start. That's uh, why Thea is the key of the concept that's behind this EP. I wouldn't say everything is around Thea, you know. It's more around the Earth, uh, which is the, you know, the main character. Thea, it's the hero. And humankind is the antagonist. Okay, I think I see where we're going here with this. And actually, an incredibly uh, unique topic because, I don't know, I guess maybe in power metal sometimes, uh, science yeah, rears yeah. its head. Um, yeah, I guess you guys are power metal. I had to listen again. I kind of got more of like a, a Swedish metal kind of sound, but I mean, yeah, there's definitely some power metal for sure. There are many influences, different influences. We've heard death, we've heard groove metal, we've heard power metal. Some people say we sound like System of a Down. Some other people say we sound like Lamb of God. As long as you like our music, I'm cool with that. Call us whatever you'd like. <laughs> I'll call you amazing. That's what I'll call you. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> you are quite welcome. Cool. So I guess, are you guys uh, like science nerds? Um, well, I don't know about science. I've studied um, chemistry, a bit of chemistry. Six. I took six in university. I'm, a, I'm an enologist, a winemaker. Uh, but my friends uh, who are in the rehearsal room right now, they're, I don't know about science, but they're pretty nerdy. You know, they like um, video games. They like table games and just they just like to, you know, dig into stuff and trip upon it. So this is we're just a bunch of guys who are really interested in learning and for us, music is a tool to spread what we know, what we like, and also learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting because 
I don't hear uh, an EP or an album being written about the beginnings of our solar system. So I thought it was a very unique uh, concept to to write shredding power groove thrash system of a down whatever else <laughs> Lamb of God metal. Hey, I'm glad you like it. I'm really, really grateful for that, for those yeah. words. Thank you. You are quite welcome. Now... Where does Zombie Night fit into that? Has the moon already been made at this point? <laughs> well, you know, um, Zombie Night is already upon Earth, you know? Um, so the moon might shine on the Zombie Night with a very, very trembling light, as the lyrics say. <laughs> and... Um, you know, there's Thea is the creation um, for us. Uh, and then you got followers of the leech, which are basically humans who are um, clear souls getting corrupted um, by their own greed. And then there's zombie night where we see the results of following the leech. You become a hollow, what we define a hollow, someone who's empty who just follows whatever he's told to do um, and does not have anything left in their eyes, in their soul. Uh, and all they want to do is conform all the others who are not zombies yet um, to this trend. And by biting them, they can do that. So it's a very metaphorical way uh, to call it zombie night, but that's how we studied the concept for this song. That's what it means. Okay, and it seems like there's quite a bit of a flow to the the EP as well as you were going through the tracks. Now, does it continue as we go out of zombie night into I Am the Mountain and Cabled Core? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, actually, the few uh, who survive, you know, people who kept their integrity become the mountain by isolating themselves and by becoming stoic and, you know, detaching themselves from society to keep themselves pure or either they're intense or, you know, for us, it's our music, you know, mm, we kept it uh, true to itself, to what it is. And I see that many musicians maybe, they find themselves in that position where, you know, their maybe their music genre is a bit out of what the general trend is. So they keep doing what they're doing, but they end up doing it for themselves. Uh, and then Cable Core is what destroys it all. So um, Cable Core specifically talks about um, our addiction to terminals such as this phone that i'm holding while recording this podcast or you know um television an old television which has a cable core and in the end even people who isolated themselves uh they find that they've been deceived since the beginning because they're all enslaved by social media and we are not sure. I'm getting a bit uh, <laughs> into the conspiracy theory right now, but it's basically what this song means, you know? Just a little bit there, Nico. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, when it comes to the, uh, the track that gets the music video, Zombie Night gets the music video, and there's quite the grotesque, disgusting displays of zombie stuff yeah. in there yeah uh now i'm curious maybe kind of a simple question maybe because zombie night you know is a pretty fun one to do and i imagine it was fun but how come thea uh, gets how come thea gets the lyric video and zombie night gets some music video and then if you wouldn't mind taking us into what you guys did and i don't know somehow stabbing yourselves and not dying well i mean granted you were zombies at the time okay so. okay um, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. First, uh, I'm going to address the Thea thing about the lyric video. Uh, simply enough, it was lockdown time, so we couldn't have possibly met to record the video. 
we wanted to push this thing out. And, you know, one of our mottos is Kalahari never stops. So we said, hey, we got the artwork that's about Thea. Um, there's a cool story. We know a, um, a girl who's real good with graphics and she put out some great lyric videos before. So why don't we do this? And we wanted to create, I don't know, you, you, you've watched, it's a bit different from your standard lyric video, you know? There's a progression, it's like a travel into space. Um, and we felt that, you know, it could have been good, because otherwise, representing Thea, we would have had to do, I don't know, some kind of rings of Saturn thing and... <laughs> uh green screens and everything i think we pulled it off pretty well i like that lyric video of course if coronavirus didn't happen probably would have been different um so that's the thing about the uh, yeah and you, you bring up a good point you know if, if coronavirus hadn't happened things would have been different so mm -hmm. that you know that leads me into with the the ep coming out in june I guess how much yeah. of the band strategy has changed as a result and what is some of the things that you guys have been working on uh, presupposedly with some, some free time over the last few months? Oh, uh, it has changed completely, completely. Um, you know, we wanted to push this EP out with live shows. Um, you know, we're not at the... We're humble. We're not on the level where we can um, tour crazy venues and pack uh, the the ground floor, you know, with people. But we we were arranging for a cool release party um, and a couple of well, a few more dates with other bands, um, also bigger guys, um, and that all went to down the drain, let's say, or at least for now, you know, a lot of my empathy goes to people who own venues as well. Um, they don't have many directions, at least here in Italy yet. And it's really hard for them to make a living in this situation. And during this free time though, we could do many things such as some self digging, you know, we we really um, got to know each other better. Um, we really discussed on how to make Kalahari grow uh, and what the next steps are for us, what we feel like doing. Um, organization is fundamental. And excuse me, I feel that this is the best suggestion that I can give to younger bands out there or young bands like us. A plan. Think about what you do. Just don't go as, you know, um, as you're blindfolded, because you gotta make the right choices. Um, and it's all experience if you make bad ones. But hey, if you can avoid spending money on a scam, which happens very often, do so. Yeah. Well, something that I notice is you guys are spending some money in the right places. And speaking of some good choices, it uh, looks like Johnny Mazeo uh, worked with you guys on this record. I know Johnny's a good guy, um, does some great stuff. I'm just curious, when it came to assembling the production team, uh, mm -hmm. how did you guys end up with Johnny? Ah, uh, um, that's, a, that's a cool story. So, um, Johnny, who I say hi to in case he listens to this um has been real great and we had a bad experience before so we wanted to you know strike mm, this production and be completely sure um i actually uh got a hold of him thanks to my singing teacher who previously recorded an album with his former band who are figure of six i don't know if you've heard of them um a uh, metal hardcore band that um was pretty influential in the underground uh scene of italy and during the 2000s and they also have a kick-ass album that they recorded at johnny's and 
nothing. We went there. It was great for the, from the first moment. We knew we were working with a professionist, also a person who who knew how to hold on to a studio with guys like us, who I'm not afraid to say, where and are very experienced in studios, you know? We're a emerging band. He was really patient and he could really pull out the best um, from, from our soul and from our passion for music. Okay, very cool, and I definitely agree. So yeah, Johnny, if you're listening in, good work again. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Beautiful. All right, fantastic. now, fantastic indeed. Now, Nico, that concludes all of the questions that I have. So if there's anything that you wanted to bring up that I did not ask, please do so. Otherwise, I wanted to thank you for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Hey. Thank you so much for having me, John. It was a pleasure. And I have something I want to say. I didn't talk about Zombie. Uh, I, for, I completely forgot about the video, Zombie Night. Oh, yes, please do. Yeah, um, nothing. Basically, um, you see in the video, it's a very short and frantic video. That's what we wanted to represent, the stress that it takes being uh, you know, part of this society and being conformed to everything and fit, fit, always fit. So we, each of us represented a different stereotype. There's the farmer, there's the construction worker, there's the businessman, the priest, and then we have a, sort of a junkie, a drug addict. And in the end, what happens is that we all become zombies. Our clothes, our you know, masks fall off, and we're all the same. We all look like zombies, so this is it. Okay, underneath the mask, yeah. son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all truly zombies. Scary. Especially when you say it like that. Now, now I believe you have a vocal coach. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go ahead and hit stop, please, sweetie.